Hey guys. <laughs> Jumping on a couple minutes early here. So I don't see anybody yet, but oh, <laughs> eight people just showed up just like that. <laughs> it was like nobody and then it was everybody. We'll wait till some more come on. How is everyone tonight? Say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. I'm going to go find you on my laptop. Okay, I see people coming in. I've got lots of highs. Hello, everybody. I've got Brittany from Manitoba. It's going so fast, I can't read them. I've got, I see Alberta, Cleveland. Atlanta, Pittsburgh, Virginia. Um, let me see what else. What are you painting tonight? Kelly wants to know. So if I get out of the way, you will be able to see we are painting a spooky um, painting for Halloween. It's called Ode to It, if you've seen the movie It, either from the 80s or the recent one. Um, I've seen both, so I thought we could throw a little red balloon in there and get a little bit creeped out. You see Massachusetts. I got on my Good Vibes shirt just so it doesn't really come and get me. <laughs> you gotta keep, you gotta keep a little positivity going when you're doing something scary. Uh, Kathy asks if there will be a replay, and there will be a replay. As soon as I'm done the live, um, I will be replaying the video. I always replay all my videos, so you'll have lots of time to redo this. So it's still a minute before 8 o'clock, so... Well, 8 o'clock where I am anyways, but... We'll give people maybe until about 5 after to find me and pop on. I've got some more people coming in from New York and Pennsylvania. Kelly from British Columbia. I've got a mix I see here of some people from Canada, some people from the States. Is there any snow yet in Ottawa? <laughs> I don't know if there's snow yet. Usually you get it first, I believe, and... I'm a little lower. I'm, I'm down uh, closer to the Michigan border, so we don't get snow usually until um, end of November, maybe middle of December, somewhere in between there. It depends on the year it is. Some years we get it early. Some years, there's been years where we haven't even had a white Christmas. So I know it's funny because when I lived in the States, um, a lot of, and they knew I was from Canada, they would call me Canuck, and um, this was when I was in high school, and they would say, like, how are you doing here, because it's such a dry heat over there, and they think, like, where I was visiting was Washington State, and they would say that we were Eskimos, because we all lived up north, and I'm like, we don't all technically have cold weather all, <laughs> all throughout the year, but it was just funny, because if you live in Canada, it's automatically you think of the cold weather, right? But no, this, this summer was very hot here. It was like over 100 degrees. So we have our fair share where I'm from of both weathers. Okay, so I'm just going to give a, a couple more seconds and then I'm just going to go over the supplies we need. I always go over the supplies if you haven't painted with me before. Um, I always go over the supplies we need before we start, just in case you want to go and grab those. Um, and then we'll get started. Okay, so it looks like it's slowing down with people coming in. So I will go over the supplies right now. So it's pretty simple colors tonight. We have black and white here. 
And then I have Tuscan red. You can do any red that you want. And I have a warm beige. This is not necessary if you don't have a warm beige. If you just have the three colors, we can pull it off. This only goes a tiny bit just in this light here, and you don't even need it. You, we could do just white here, so no worries if you don't have that. Um, then I just have a paper plate for my paint, some napkins, a cup filled with water to clean my brushes. And then we have um, this this type of brush here, like an oval brush. It's very puffy. I know these are not always easy to find. Um, this one's actually quite old, as you can see, it's stained. Um, if you don't have this tonight and you just have like a round-headed brush or a filbert brush, that will work. It's not going to make the background as fluffy looking, but you can definitely get away without needing this big fluffy brush. I don't use this often in tutorials. Um, I usually try to stick with more standard brushes just so everybody um can paint without having to go search for stuff but um for this one i did use this brush here and then we have just a detailed brush i have a size three um, if you do size three or smaller you're good and then just a small flathead brush here tonight i did bring my blow dryer in just to kind of blow dry the background before we get started on the actual um like picture that's going on but if you don't have a blow dryer, even if you just step outside real quick, or I always give a lot of time in between. So acrylic paint generally dries fairly quick. Okay. So if you're ready to start painting, just throw me some thumbs up. Um, if you haven't painted with me before, usually what I will do is um, in between each step, I usually just wait I'll say, give me some thumbs up when you're done. And I wait for um, a majority of thumbs up to come up just so nobody feels rushed. If you are a speedy painter and you do get done and you're kind of just sitting there, I always say just sit back, relax, um, enjoy the moment when you don't have to be doing something, uh, take a sip of whatever drink you have and just enjoy the moment. So um, I like to kind of bring my paint nights um, so that they're, they're okay for somebody who's just starting and somebody who's been painting for a while. I like to kind of meet in the middle. There will be a replay right after this. So if for some reason you fall incredibly far behind, you'll be able to find the video immediately after and you can go right back to the spot and then fast forward, rewind, whatever you need to do uh, to be at that spot again. So tonight there is no, no pressure, um, no rush and just having a good time. And we'll get started. I've seen lots of thumbs up. So we are going to start with the background first, um, which you'll see here is just kind of like it looks like a creepy kind of foggy, foggy scene. So we're going to start with this big brush. Like I said before, if you don't have one and you just have a filbert brush or um, also known as a round, round tip, you can use that as well. Worst case, you don't have that and you only have a square. That's fine, too. We can we can work with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some white on our plate. And then we're going to get some black and we're just going to make kind of like a medium gray. You're going to see here just the darker tone gray here. We're going to make that. So we're going to put some black um, just on the side and we can push some black in until we make that tone that we're looking for. So I suggest um, mixing it with a flathead brush rather than that big puffy brush. Once we start with that with this brush here, we do not want to get it wet until we are completely done using it. Um, just because this soaks up the water like crazy and you'll never really fully dry it and get that effect again once it's wet. So we are going to, as you see here, I have black and white. And I'm just going to take a scoop of my black and I'm just going to start mixing it in my white. Just keep mixing that in there. 
if you need more, get more. That's still too light. We kind of want it to be more doomy. <laughs> we want the color to scare us. <laughs> Maybe I'll just end up using all the black. There we go. Let me see here. Yeah, that's pretty good. If this is not the exact, exact tone, that's okay. We are mixing, so if we don't put the exact tone, amount of each color in it's obviously going to be a little bit of a different shade than before but so that's what I've got there sort of like a medium gray um the, the replay will stay up for a long time and if for some reason it's down um I do have um a YouTube channel which is the same name Artisticris and my videos are all up there as well so if for some reason you happen to miss it on Facebook, you can catch it on YouTube. Um, but I've had videos up for up to three months, so there's really no rush. I like to give these guys time to get in. I know life is busy. Get in and paint at your own leisure. Okay, so we have our puffy brush. And what we're going to do, the effect's not going to come right away because we're going to layer. But what we're really going to do is we're just going to try to get that back drop going so we're just dunking it in it's going to be like a big blob in the center if you're using a different type of brush just do the same uh technique with it so we're just coming on here i'm going to move this a little closer One second here. okay i'm going to come in here and we're just going to do small circles all over so just small circles with just this gray so far. And we just want to cover the back surface right now. So that's all we're going for. Just small circular motions until this whole background is painted in. And if you run out of paint, just grab some more. It doesn't matter which circle motion you're going in. I'm left-handed, so I might be going a little bit in a different motion than you. You might be going this way or this way. It doesn't matter. We're just getting a base down right now for our acrylic. You always want to start with getting just a base down. So I'm working tonight with an 11 by 14 uh, multimedia paper. If you're working with something a bit bigger, this might take you a little bit longer. Um, so don't worry, don't feel rushed. Just, uh, just let me know in the comments if I'm going too fast. And I'll slow it down a bit. The reason why we're going in circles, why I'm not just doing this, is because you're going to see those paint strokes, even though it's a solid color, when it dries, you're going to see those paint strokes in there. And that's what's giving it the effect of that smog. So that is the reason why I'm continuing to go in a circular motion as opposed to just covering it really quickly.
we're doing. That's all we did so far. We just made a medium gray. We just put some on our big round brush here and we just covered the background going in a circular motion. Just all over. Is anybody scared yet? <laughs> So if you don't have any white reserved on the plate from what you just did, you can go ahead and put more white on your plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go on to continuing the background. Um, once the background's done and all their colors are put where they need to be, then I will give you guys a ton of time to catch up. Um, but just to keep going with the theme of the background. So once we are done completely covering it, we're still going to be working with this brush here and we're just going to go, I have some white on my plate. I'm going to put it in there and then we're not going to keep that big glob like we did with this. We're just going to kind of pat it off just so you can still see our bristles in there. So with the, if you have a flat brush, I see there's a question. Um, if you have a flat brush, you can still just go in the circular motion. It's going to give you, it's still going to give you the circles. They just, it's going to be a little, um, when you start adding the white, it's just going to look probably a little less puffy, but like you'll see the puffs coming kind of like a smoke. It probably won't be as much. But for now, just cover the background in a circular motion still with the flat brush or whatever brush you have. So yeah, I'll give everyone a couple seconds. I see a couple people just joined. I don't want to rush anyone. So we're just covering the background with that gray. We mixed white and black and just kind of made a smoky gray. And we just covered the back in a circular motion with our big brush that we have here. Um, if you don't have this shape brush, then you can use a half inch flat brush would work or even a round, a round brush or filbert brush. Okay, so what we're going to do next is just put a little bit of white on that brush. You're not washing this brush out. Um, you want to have all the colors kind of in there, the gray and then the white on top, just for kind of blending a bit, making it look smoky. On top of, if you specifically have this type of brush, you don't want to get it wet till you're done using it because it's not going to give you the same effect. These kind of brushes soak up the water um, a lot. So... Okay, so what we're doing is I just put a little bit of white on there and then I just kind of tapped it off on my plate. So just so it's not too much. And I'm just gonna start at the top corner. You can start at whatever corner here. And we're gonna be doing that same circular motion to kind of give that 
So you're going to see it's going to go on quite white to start with until the paint wears off this brush. But the beauty of that is after it starts to wear off, you can go back over and just kind of keep circul circling like this, circling around. And it's going to give it that smoggy look. And if you find, let's say like up here, let's say you find that maybe it's a little too white and you put a little too much, there's nothing wrong with going back into that gray that you use and just kind of bringing some of that back in there. So just use your own discretion on um, how yours is looking if you want to go back in and pop some more gray back in there. But the key here is to keep going over it. Keep going in a circular motion over that paint. As you'll see here, when I bring it close, you'll see there, like that's not really mixed in too well, but as I keep going, it's giving that smoggy effect. So same with if you were using a filbert brush or a flathead brush, just put very little on your brush and then um, you can get the same effect if you're just going round and around like this. It's just don't have too much paint on your brush. Yeah, so we're going to kind of, I'm leaving a little bit of an edge of the gray here. So it's not going to be completely all covered, but we are doing the majority of the canvas with this white um, on, over top of that gray, but we should be seeing the gray in behind there. And as you circle and say you hit a spot you already did, it's just going to come up a little bit more white, right? Like almost like a third coat. And that's completely fine. That kind of gives it the dimension, the depth. So I'm not worrying too much about getting right up here, right on my sides or right at the bottom. I'm just, I'm going like this and whatever I hit on the sides is what I hit and what I miss is what I miss. Most of this side anyways is going to be filled with uh, the picture, so. And we're just going into circles, little circles. And as your brush wears out of paint, that's where you're going to get, for example, like this here is more white and then this is the gray still kind of coming through there because we don't need it to be uniformed. When it's foggy out, it's not uniform. It hits where it hits. I'm just bringing a little bit more gray back in here and that's what I'm talking about. You can kind of just play with it a bit. So if you feel like one spot just had a bit too much white, just tap a tiny bit. You just want very light, a very light amount of paint and it's going to spread around.
So these videos, so all my past tutorials that I've done live that are free, um, you will find them in two places. You can find them on my Artistic Chris page under videos. You'll just go on my main page, you'll see the tab videos, and then they will all be on there. So you can find them that way. Um, if you're, if you are not as much of a fan of doing it on Facebook and you like YouTube, you can go on my uh, YouTube channel, which is Artistic Chris as well. And they'll be there. Um, I think I have most of them up there. This one will not be there tonight. Um, I'll try to put it on um, this weekend sometime. Just because there's a little bit more of a process than just reposting it to Facebook. So um, if you're looking to do it this weekend, then just grab it off of Facebook. If you, can, if you want to wait a bit and you want to do it on YouTube, then it'll be there by next week. So when we're done all this smoky stuff, you can wash this brush out. We're not going to use it again. Yeah, if you're missing this, no worries. It will be up. Um, this painting will probably take until about quarter to 10, 10 o'clock. So... It'll be up on Facebook as of, as of by 10, I would say, and then it'll be there for, for a long time. I usually leave them up, I don't know, a couple months, three months. It's funny because all week I've been painting Christmas scenes and getting ready for November and December. So I painted, I always paint the holidays way further ahead in advance than than what we need them just because I want to advertise them, give everyone a lot of time to get their supplies. So all, all week and all the last couple weeks I've been doing Christmas ones and I'm all festive and jolly and then I'm like, oh yeah, this is my last Halloween painting. I gotta get back to being scared again. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm kind of trying to get back in the mood of Halloween even though it hasn't even happened yet because I've been with Christmas brain for a while. So this will get me back into it. So I'm going to stop and let everybody just uh, get their background set how they want. Um, if you are done and you are ready to move on, just shoot me a thumbs up or a like or anything to let me know you're ready to move on. And then I'll see how many we get. I know we have about 150 people watching, so um, I'll wait till I see quite a few hearts and... hearts and thumbs up and whatever you want to throw at me. <laughs> Plus this gives our background a little time to dry. We need to have our background dry uh, for putting this on, like this, um, this tower. So when we're blending it, doesn't matter if the background's wet. When we're putting an actual image on a background, we want it to be really dry, just so it doesn't blend in. We want it to stand out and stand on top. So if you have to blow dry it or step outside for a second, go ahead and, and get this dry. Mine's already dry. I did this so much that I dried it, so. What's everybody drinking tonight? I got my tea going, as usual. I'm a rebel. <laughs> rebel with my tea. I see Sprite, mimosas, some water, red Moscato. Is that a wine? Okay, so when we start the tower, I'm going to go... 
I'm going to go in sections. So I'm not starting yet. So if you're still drawing your, uh, your canvas, no worries. But I just want to explain a little bit. When we look at this, um, I want to show you how we're going to break it down to not look at it as a whole. Um, I like to look at things as shapes and that really breaks it down and makes it a lot easier to be able to paint each section rather than just taking it all in and not really sure where to start or how to kind of calibrate what's what here. So the reason why I'm waiting for us to start this part is because each part is a shape and a section that I want everyone to be able to hear what I'm saying just so that um, if we have somebody fall behind then it's going to kind of be confusing a bit on the shapes. So I'm just going to make sure everyone's ready to rock and then um, I will start explaining it a bit better. So for those of you that are waiting, you can put more black on your plate. Oh no, Donna says, first time I've used my brush and it shed everywhere. Yeah, sometimes brushes, it depends on the, what quality there is. Some of them shed, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Ooh, root beer with cream, that sounds good. Bud Light, nice. My husband makes his own beer and wine, so I'm always here in all the processes and everything that's going on with that. So I can, can respect a good beer and a good wine. Okay. So I see a lot of thumbs up came in. I'm gonna start, I'll go slow. What we're going to do is we're going to view these as sh this tower is what we're going to be working on. We're going to view it as shapes to start. I'm going to be working from the top to the bottom in each section and kind of show you how to break it down. So we're going to put black on our plate and we're going to use our small flathead brush. Okay. So what we're going to be doing first is we're just going to be working on this piece right here. So just this piece. So it's going to come out on an angle. So we're starting right from the top and it's going to come out on an angle. We're going about the width of it is maybe like an, an inch, an inch and a half. So you can always start by just putting your brush in the paint. We're using a very light amount for right now and just kind of mark at the top where you want to start this. So, I'd say about an inch and a half over. We can just put a little dot there. Oops, I should move this up so you can see. So I just have a tiny dot right here on where I'm going to start. And I'm just going to come down on just a tiny bit of an angle. So it's not straight down. It's coming down a bit. And I'm just using the skinny part of my brush. So when I put it on, it's going to be like this. It's not going to be flat like that. It's going to be the skinny way. And I'm just coming down about two and a half inches on an angle. This does not have to be perfect because it is a silhouette and you can always fix it after. Um, if you're afraid of going too big, then go smaller to start. And as you, um, as we go, you can always add to it if it was too small. So I'm just bringing that out there like that. And I'm just coming straight back towards the edge. You can see here, I think I'm going to do mine just a tiny bit longer. But that's what's awesome about the silhouette is I can just do that and then I can come back again. And I'm just going to color that in. So we're just coloring it in black. And that's our first shape.
And I see here, I think I came out a little bit more even than on here, but when you're doing freehand, it's going to be a tiny bit different each time. So don't sweat the small stuff about exact measurements or anything like that. Okay, so I'm going to continue on with the shapes. Um, if you did not have time to color it in, we can color it all in together after. So don't worry, the color it in part is the easy part. So we're just going to focus on the shapes right now. So then I have a ledge here. This is going to be the next thing we do. I have a ledge here that comes out um, about an inch past this. So you can even just mark it here and just come back this way. And then it's just going to go down on a little angle. So I just angle my brush there. I'm going to bring that closer so you can see. So it's just angled in a bit. And I'm just going to take and bring that right back again all the way there. And then I'm going to color it in, or paint it in, I should say. And hopefully that's even. I'm kind of off to the side a bit over here because I want these guys to be able to see, but I think that looks okay. Okay, so then from the bottom point of this right here, this part that is going down on an angle, that's going to be our next point where we start. So not from up here, but from down here. And we're just going to go down a little bit, not a ton. And then we're going on another angle down a bit. So I'll show you that closer there. So just straight down from that point there, straight down, and then just a little bit down on an angle. Sorry, was I wasn't even in there. I was reading a comment. <laughs> Probably wasn't even in the camera, sorry guys. And then I'm just bringing it straight back here. Okay, so Pam asks a question. Um, she says, so the balloon going sideways, is it part of the mystery of the movie? It's, it's just a horror movie with a clown. The clown's name is It. I believe it's, his name is It, that's what it's called. <laughs> um, and it's just, he has, the balloons show up in the movie and they'll pop and then there'll be like blood that comes out of the inside of them. Um, and it's kind of like he's just always known for the red balloons. So if ever you see like a red balloon around Halloween, it's kind of like a indication. He hides underneath the sewers and he lures children in. Oh, Pennywise. Yeah, I knew that. His name is Pennywise. <laughs> Jeez. Thanks, Joanne. Let's have a moment there. Yeah, so it's just a part, kind of like a symbol of that movie. If anyone else knows anything else about it, I did see both, but maybe I'm not explaining it good. Okay, so we're just going to color that in next. So 
So, so far we just have that there. So then we are going to go from that corner again here, that one that's lower, and we're going to just put another little part down, just a little stick like that. And we're going to go down on another angle, but it's going to be a little bit bigger this time, so a little bit longer. And then we're going to go straight across again. The balloon I did sideways just because it's kind of like hanging in the wind, you know, like it's just kind of like it doesn't have helium in it. It's just kind of stuck there. It blew into the grate. It blew into like this part. It's kind of trapped. It's been there for a while. That's my story in my head. Um, You can put your balloon any way you want it. Like if you want to have it straight up, if you I just I wanted the string to be it wouldn't be realistic, I think, if it was facing straight up and then the string was down and then coming around. Because naturally a balloon would almost look like it's tied up, it's hung from that point, right? So, but if you want to do your balloon up here and have the string this way, or really whenever you paint with me, I say go for whatever creativity you want to add to yours. If you want to put a, anything into some bats or whatever you want to put. And then we're just going to color that in. Jacob says, red balloons are also a symbol for firefighters. I didn't know that. Hmm, that's cool. And then we're just going to go from that lower point all the way straight down. I'm just going to take... And I kind of, I put my... I always put my baby finger or part of my hand on there when I'm trying to do a straight line. And then when I, all my weight is bearing on that hand. So as I go down, I'm not relying on just my fingers to keep it straight. Cause a lot of times your fingers or your hands are going to shake if it's up in the middle of the air. So either rest your pinky finger or your hand right on there and then just slide your hand down and guide that way rather than being up like this and kind of being shaky. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to color all that in black as well.
Dorothy says good idea for the hand. Yes, it's just something to to steady, right? Because if you have all of your weight of your arm up in the air, it's going to eventually get shaky, just naturally. And then for some reason, if I am painting and I think about shaking and then I start shaking more, <laughs> it just goes downhill from there. So a couple deep breaths helps too. Sometimes we don't realize when we're painting, we're, we're in the moment, we're holding our breath. We're trying to get it straight. We're trying not to move. A um, couple deep breaths before we start any straight lines um, can minimize shaking too. Just wait till everybody catches up to that point there. Does anyone need me to kind of go over what I did or is everybody understanding and good with the shapes of, of the tower? Just let me know in the comments if you want me to just quickly recap or if you're good. So what we're going to work on next is we're going to leave the tower. We're going to put some shadowing in after or highlighting, I should say, just so we can differentiate the parts of the tower. Right now, it just looks like a completely black silhouette, but we want to be able to see the structure shape, but we'll wait for that to dry a bit. And we're just going to be working on um, this part right here next. So that'll be it. We're going to still be using black and we're still going to be using our flathead brush here. Okay, so basically what we want to do is we want to figure out how low we're going to start this, how far out we're going to come. So for me, I think I'm just going to try to see here what I did. Yeah, so I'm a little bit lower on this one, but uh, no big deal. We'll just kind of go in between here. So I just come down a bit. I might stay up a bit more for this one just because I am lower, but... Um, if you're looking at your page, it's a little bit higher than halfway up. So if we go to halfway through our page and just move up a tiny bit, that's where we're going to be. And then for it coming out, um, if we look again at halfway through the page here, we're just going to move over maybe an extra inch from, from that half. So let's put a little mark of black paint. So let's find our halfway mark here. When it comes straight down, we're finding halfway here. So we want to be up a little bit and we want to come out a little bit. So we're going to put our first little mark just right about here. And just a tiny dot just to get us started. And then all we're going to do is we're going to take, once again, because we are doing a straight line, put your hand right on the canvas. And fully put your brush down first. Just touch it lightly to the canvas. And then you're just going to go straight along here. And you're going to have that line. And that is really just that line right there for now. So yeah, so if we look at our canvas here, it's about an inch out from halfway. And then same with down here, we're about halfway here and about another inch up. So that's kind of where we're placing it. Okay. 
Pam asks, notice you're using a pad. Does it keep the paint from soaking through to the other pages? Yes, it absolutely does. This is a multimedia pad and it's made for acrylics, water paints. Um, you can paint and it will not go through. So if you see here, right? You see here, I painted this one. If I flip the page, it did not go through. So that's what its purpose is for. This one is... Let me get to the front here. This one is that brand there, Canson. This is extra large, extra large is 11 by 14. I get these on Amazon. Um, I know some of you can have uh, told me you've gotten them at Walmart too. So this one here is 60 pages and it's roughly, I'm in Canada, it roughly costs me um, close to $20 with tax. So. It's been worth it though. I've done all of my COVID paintings since March. I haven't, I bought the two, one to make my examples in and then one to actually paint with everybody. Um, and I haven't bought any more since March. So it's been lasting quite a long time. This multimedia pad is an 11 by 14. I'm not sure if you can get them bigger. Um, I don't think I've ever looked for bigger on Amazon just because this is a pretty good size for, for time-wise, for showing everybody, trying to keep the painting around two hours, just because doing anything over two hours kind of gets monotonous. So um, I like to stick with the 11 by 14. I'm not sure if you can get like 16 by 20s. I know you can get smaller sizes though, for sure, because I've seen them. Yeah, Lee says we got them from Walmart. So they might be even cheaper at Walmart than Amazon. I just, I haven't really been too much out to my local Walmart. So just with COVID and everything. So Donna says Walmart and Amazon, almost $13 before tax in the States. Yeah, so this, if you're in the States, it'll definitely be cheaper. Um, everything in Canada seems to be a bit more expensive. Okay, so I'm going to keep moving on. Just let me know if you're falling behind. So what we're going to work on next is we are just going to do this diagonal line from here to here. So what we can do is kind of look at um, where our point started here and look at the whole space. So we see our space here. Um, if we take and we divide it in half about here, that's where we can bring our next point. So we can put a little dot there. And I'll go over this again if everyone's just kind of getting to this point. So I put a little dot there. And I'm just making a triangle. So just going from here. So for me, when I'm doing this, my, my brush is on a 45 degree angle. Um, I'm using, you can see it's kind of hard to see. You can see it's the skinny side and I'm only using that one edge. So the a, a flathead brush kind of looks like a rectangle from that angle, right? So I'm just I'm using the bottom half of that long part of the rectangle of the brush. So that's where I'm on a 45 degree angle and I'm just using that thin line. That's how I'm getting this line so thin with such a thick brush. So the flathead brushes are awesome because we can take and we can fill in quickly by using it the big way or we can do fine lines um, by using it the skinny way. <laughs> Laura, if you have a hard time catching up, um, within the next hour, I'm going to be reposting this video. So if you feel like you can't catch up, just, um, 
if you wait the hour or want to even do it tomorrow or you can try to catch up no problem but um don't feel rushed this will be up for you okay so the first line here so i'm going to go over this so the first line here is if we go halfway to the page and halfway to the page here so put our fingers here let me move this up a bit so i'm here and here if i come and i meet my fingers we're moving just up an inch and just out an inch. So, oops, I just ruined my painting. <laughs> so that's where we're going to be. So it's a little bit, one inch from the center this way and one inch up from the center this way. So I just put a dot right there and just draw that line across that way. And then when we start here from here, I'm just going about halfway up, putting a dot and then doing that diagonal line. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little tiny spot to this one here, just a little bit, nothing too big. Just extend it a little bit. And I'm just going to put a little triangle in there. So all I did was just extend that big line there and just put a little tiny triangle just somewhere for our light to hang off of or stand on, I should say. So we have a big triangle and then we just have a tiny one. Okay, so now we have all of this here to fill in. Now this doesn't have to be exactly like mine. You can follow along exactly if you want, or if you want to get creative and make just a grate of any kind, um, you can do that too. So I'm going to show you step by step, but this really is just, it's just wrought iron. So any kind of designs and lines you do in there is going to look great. Um, but what I did first is I just put a little like half circle right there in the middle so just in between just kind of in the middle there and i just bring one line here and i'm using the brush the skinny way again because you can always thicken the lines that way it's rather it's better to do that than to go this way and it's too thick. And then I have one here. And one here. So I'll hold it closer so you can see.
So once we have this, I'm still using my flathead brush and I'm just going to take and make two little circles, well half circles, um, around that circle we already did. So just one like that. And then a little bit of a bigger one. Okay, so I'm working in my my little space that is furthest away from the tower right now. And all I'm going to do is put a line in the center, just down like that. And it's only going to that circle, it's not going all the way through. So just like that. And then I'm going to round one here. Round one here. And then just do a couple more of these in there. Like I said, it does not have to be exact to mine. You might have less space. Um, really what we're just trying to achieve is the right iron look, kind of like a webbed look. But it doesn't have to be exactly the same. So if you find like your space is kind of small and you want to use um, your detailed brush instead, you can do that too. I'm going to switch for the smaller ones just to my detailed brush, just because I have a little bit more control then. And I'm just going to move um, to this middle point right here. And you'll see up here, I kind of have just like a little diamond shape. So I'm just going to put a little diamond shape in there. And just color that in. And then I just have a little round piece there. And this one comes up the same. And I'm just rounding all the way up. I'll move that closer so you can see it. We're going to be putting vines over this anyway, so it doesn't have to be perfect. The pattern's going to be a little interrupted by those vines, so we're not going to see it 100% clearly anyways. Right now it's just standing out because it's the first thing that's there. I'm 
And I'm just going to continue on to that last piece. And I'm just putting little V's in between these two circles we did, or half circles. So I'll give everybody a couple minutes just to kind of get their shapes in there um, before I move on to doing this light. Just throw some thumbs up when you're done, when you're ready to move on to doing the light, and I'll kind of get a sense of where everyone is. Does anyone have any plans this weekend? Tomorrow we are raking leaves and my kids are gonna jump in them. They've been waiting all week for this. So <laughs> it's what got them to do school without complaining. So <laughs> I'm like, okay, let's get this week done. Let's, let's do our schoolwork. And then on the weekend, we'll go in the front yard. We'll collect all the leaves and we'll jump in them. And then Sunday we are carving pumpkins. So they're pretty excited for this weekend. Yes, I can definitely hold it close again, no problem. Angie says, just cleaning my mom's place and hopefully catching an outside music show. Is the music show uh, like a specific band or is it um, like a whole bunch of artists together? <clears throat> Okay, so I see a couple thumbs up. Oh, a band called Rock, Rock Lobster, that's cool. I love going to see shows like that. An 80s cover band, that's cool. Um, we have one here that's pretty popular. I'm trying to think of what their, their name is. Um, I think it's called 80s Inc, like 80s Incorporated. I think that's the name of the band that we have around here. They always play everywhere. They're really good. Okay, so we're gonna move on and we're gonna work on the light. Now, I had brought out, if you look, see this one here, 
I brought it out a little bit more even, but because I'm a little bit short on space here, I think I'm just gonna leave this shape and we're gonna work with it from here. If you have extra space on the side, you can bring your um, this line out a little further to start the light, but I'm gonna start mine right here. So that will be the only difference here, but I think I miscalculated just a little bit. I just don't want it to be too close to the side. So if you feel like you have lots of space here, you can bring it out even more and then start your light here. I'm going to just continue it from right here. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to put at the bottom of this triangle, I'm just going to put a tiny little circle. And I'm using my pointed brush for this part. So I'm going to be using my fine tip brush to make the light. So I'm just putting a tiny little wrought iron circle there. And then we're going to be doing right above here, we're just going to be putting almost like a little half circle. So I will move this closer for you so you can see it better. And we're just going to fill it in. So up top there, just a little half circle. And then we are going to put a little bit of a bigger one on top of that one. And we're going to color it in. We're going to do a whole bunch of highlighting. So right now it's just going to look like a black blob, but it will get definition soon. So you'll see there, I just put a little bit of a bigger one on top of that half circle, kind of like a, almost like a little oval. <laughs> I'm laughing at everyone's comments in here about the rock lobster. It's hilarious. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to be working on getting this base in here. So that'll be next. And really, we're just going out. We're just going to be making triangles, or I shouldn't say triangles, sorry, lines out just like this. So our first set of lines, so our first line here closest to the tower, it's just going to come out on an angle. And I'm trying to see the length of like an, an inch, I'd say, an inch and a half there, like that. And then we are going to do another one, not not all the way on the edge of here, but just a little bit in. So I'm gonna move this closer to show you. So we have those two so far. And then we're going to have another one beside it just coming up a bit. So now we have three. <laughs> Nicole says she dropped her pretzel in the paint. <laughs> oh. As long as you're not going to eat it now, I guess. <laughs> Don't worry, Rosie, there's going to be um, a replay. So if you got here late, you can always just watch and then catch it later. So this, this middle line here, this one is going to be a tiny bit higher. We're going to make sure it's a tiny bit higher than this one so that when we connect it, it's going to be going on a downward angle. So it's going to connect on a downward angle. 
And then these two here will be pretty straight even. And we're going to come straight across here. So you'll see this one here. This middle line's a bit higher, so this is going to connect down a bit. And then these two are pretty even. <laughs> okay so then what we're going to be doing is just following these same lines so from this point here closest to the tower we're just going to come up not as much on an angle as we did this one just a tiny bit but it's going to be a bit more straight and we're going to come up here like this and it's about i'd say another inch and a half two inches there it's going to be longer than than this one and we're going to follow same with this one these are going to come out on a bit of an angle as well and if you can see my pinky fingers down i'm only moving my fingers with the brush i'm not moving my whole hand so find my place down and i just move my fingers for my straight lines my fingers are not going to have as many places to go when they're attached to this pinky finger that's kind of anchored down as they would if I was just loose. So right now I can go all over my canvas shaking. If I put my finger down, my fingers only have so far to go. So that's how we keep it straight there. That's the best way I can explain it. Oh, no problem for the replay. I always have my replays up just so everyone can take their own time and enjoy it. I know everyone's got plans and they're all busy, so no problem for the replays. Okay. So once again, this middle one here is going to be a little bit higher and we're going to connect it going up. And then these ones are going to be straight across. And when we get here, we can go over a tiny bit, just like a like there's a little lip on the top of the lid of the light. So then for our lid, we're going to take and we're going to be putting the lines the opposite angle. So we've been going out like this so far. So now we're going to bring the lines in a bit on this sort of angle here. That way it kind of ties it up into being um, skinnier on top. So we'll come up from this line here on an angle. And follow suit here. And these ones I kept pretty even. So you can take this line all the way up to that one and then this side here instead of going out this way it's going to come in a bit so we're following um the edge of the lip not this edge so we're going to go right to our point here and just come up and then we can connect it straight across
So we're going to finish off this light at the top here, and we're just going to build almost like a little, like, I don't even know, what are these called? Trapezoids? <laughs> I don't want to get too technical here. Um, so just in the center, we're just going to bring a little bit of an angle. I'll move this closer so you can see better. Almost like we would be doing a full triangle, but we're going to cut it off. We're not going to do a full triangle. You'll see there. Um, yes, Pam, I'm having a hard time finding paint too. Um, I've been ordering off of Amazon and Michaels online. Sometimes if you order Michaels online, what they'll do is they'll combine all the stores in your area and they'll they'll take stock from all of that. So say you order five bottles of white paint, they might take two from this store and three from this store and then you'll get shipments separately. So you'll receive two one day and three the, the next or a couple days uh, difference. But I find if you shop Michaels online, then instead of just going to that one store and seeing they don't have what you need, the, the online will actually take and combine all the store's supplies together and they'll, they'll send it to you. So I've been doing that. Amazon, my local Dollar Tree, um, I used to work there, so I'm lucky enough to have people give me a heads up on if the paint comes in, but it's been very slim pickings. Okay, and to finish the top off, we're just going to do a big oval on top. We can color that in. We can color this little guy in here. And we can take and color in this top part. And then we can also color in this bottom part here. So we're leaving that space right there where the light's going to shine through. Everything else we're filling in black. I'm located in uh, Ontario, Canada. Okay, so I'm going to move this closer so everyone can get a look at what's going on here. And that's where we're at right now. I'm going to give everyone a few minutes just to catch up to that. I'm just going to take this one side here. I'm just going to bring it out a little bit. Just so there's a little lip. Not as big as that side, but just a tiny bit. 
There you go. Hi, Lori. Glad you could make it here to see it. Yeah, the, the replay will be up soon. Probably another, another uh, maybe 40 minutes it'll be up. Okay, so once everybody's done coloring that in, or painting that in, just let me know in the comments. Throw me some likes, some thumbs up, um, and then we can move on. Okay, awesome. So what we're gonna work on next is we're gonna bring some light into the center here. So if you don't have white on your plate already, um, like I said, you can just use white for this. If you wanna get, if you have warm beige and you wanna put a little bit on your plate, I did put a little in the center, but it really isn't necessary. Um, if you didn't get this color, we could just do it with white. And then we should have that gray left over from our background still. If not, you can mix um, a little bit more gray. And that's just the black and the white together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our flathead small brush here. And I'm just going to come in with a little bit of that gray. And we're just going to be filling in the outer edge kind of in a circular, so circular motion. So, or not, sorry, not circular motion, circular shape. So we want to have our corners there. And we're just going to kind of make a circle in the center here. So we've got our gray all around the edges. So we're just making a, we're kind of leaving like a small little circle in the center there. Oops, move it closer so you can see. So you'll see there I just left a little circle in the center. And then same with over here, we're just gonna color this one side in here with the gray and we'll come back through with some white down the center just to highlight it. But right now we're just filling that in with gray. And then we can take and we'll wipe off our brush. We don't have to stick it in the water and completely wash it out, but just kind of wipe it off on your napkin just so there's not a ton of uh, gray in there. And then you can go into the white. Just have a little bit of white there. And just start in the center of your circle and just go in a little tiny circular motion. And start getting bigger and bigger until you hit that gray and then you're gonna blend it out into that gray on the sides and the gray is going to blend with it. So you'll see there, it'll end up with that there. So you're gonna see some white in that gray, a little bit of gray in the white and that's exactly what you want. So you wanna work in a circular motion outwards. If you start coming back into the center, you're gonna pull that gray into the center more. So try to keep it started in the center and then work your way out to the outside. And we're gonna do the same thing with just a little strip of white just down the center of here. So you wanna use a very light am amount of paint. You don't want it to be too too crazy. You don't want it to take over. 
You just want to put a little bit of white over here in the center there. And then if you do have that cream, you can just put a tiny bit in the center too and kind of work it out. And it kind of gives that illumination of a little bit of light in there. So you'll see, it just looks like there's a light in the center there, but you can't really see it. The glass is dirty. It's been up there for how many years? We don't know. Creeping people out. Pam says, love how you do all the foundation stuff and then do the details makes it come alive. Yeah, it's really with acrylic paint. That's what it is. You just gotta, you just start with a foundation and you just build from there. So the warm beige, I just put a very tiny bit on my brush and I just did exactly what I did with the white. Just um, very light handed though. You don't want to take that white paint off. And I just went in a circular motion just a couple times around and it just kind of throws it in there. So it's basically the same way I did the white, but it's going to mix with the white. So you'll still see some through there because the white is still wet. Laura says makes it look like makes it look like it's turned on. Yes, yes. Makes me wonder who climbs up there to change that bulb. <laughs> Not me if I see that red balloon attached to there, that's for sure. Uh, I'd be running the other way so fast. Okay, so we're going to start putting um, our highlights in our building and on our light. Just make sure our building should definitely be dry by now. We're going to work on that first and then we're going to move over to the light. So by then it should all be dry. Um, if for some odd reason your building is not dry, just give it a quick blow dry. But we waited quite a long time, so you should be good. So what we're going to do is we are going to use the gray that we made here. But we're going to add a little more black to it. So we want it to be even darker. We don't want the highlights to come through like in a crazy way or pop. We just want to see that there's dimension in the building. So I'm going to take some more black that I have here and I'm just going to mix a section with gray. You're not going to need a ton of paint for this. We want to have a very light amount of paint. So don't worry about mixing a whole bunch. And we just want like a deep charcoal gray. So when we're done mixing that, you'll see this was the original color and it's quite a bit darker here. And just wipe off all the excess paint on that on your brush. You don't have to wash it off in the water. We're going to use it anyways. Yeah, yellow is fine. If you have yellow for the light and you don't have warm beige, that's perfectly fine. You can use yellow. The, the warm beige on the light just followed the center. So we put a little bit of warm beige on here and we just went in a circular motion just over top of the white. 
So basically right on top of the white, but you'll see white through there if your paint is still wet. So make sure your white is still wet and then when you mix that beige in, you're gonna kind of get a swirl of light. So it'll be two-toned. Okay, so we're gonna work on some highlights first um, up in this original shape that we did. So we're gonna say, because we have this light here, but we're gonna say we have some sort of natural light coming from the opposite side and it's shining down on this building. So even though there's a lot of fog going on, we'll just pretend that that's our light source here. And so every part of our shadowing is gonna be heavier on this side of the building. It's gonna, it's gonna get less as we go far away because that's where the shadows are gonna come in. So we're gonna get a little bit of paint on our brush. And what we want is we wanna be able to see the bristles through this. So when I dunk it in, see how you can kind of see like the thick paint there i'm going to give it a quick wipe just so that we can still see the bristles i know it's really hard to see that but just trust me <laughs> i can see bristles here okay so then we're going to go along this side here and we're going very light-handed we want the brush to hit and miss because when light is coming at a building it's not hitting an exact shape. It's kind of in and out, right, of the shapes of the building. So we want to go light-handed on about a 45 degree angle, and I'm going the thick way here, and just kind of scrape down and hit and miss. So I will show you closer once I get something going on here. And we're just going to kind of come out a bit So we went down first, we kind of got our line there, and I'm just pulling whatever paint I have left over, just kind of pulling it off to the side here, just lightly. So you'll see here, now we have that light hitting that part of the building. Now already we can see there. this is a different part of the building than this is gonna be. And that's how we're gonna kind of bring in those shapes. So we're just following the line. So this is our next line. So we put that shadow in there. I just left that. Nothing is falling here. Give me one second. Why are you falling on me? I think this thing is getting old. Okay, so that's what we got for the first part. And then we're just going to give a little highlight right in here just to show that there's a ledge there. So th there's a ledge here. This part of the building is going to be sunk in a bit. So I'm just grabbing a little more of that dark paint. And I'm just going to use my brush along with the shape. So if I'm going on a skinny part of the building, I'm going to use my brush on the skinny way. I'm going to use it sideways. If I'm working on a thick part of the building, I'm going to use my brush the thick way. If that makes sense there. So I'm coming along here, always light-handed, hitting and missing along, just to show that there is an edge there. And then we are going to do the same here. So this ledge here is the width of our whole little angle there. So we want to skip that. We want to leave that dark. Our next spot that we um, made a shape was when we drew this little line down. So right here, there's another ledge. So we're just going to take um, and we're just going to pull along that ledge just lightly. So now you can see like this piece here, it actually looks like it's a ledge because we made that that line there. So we can see now it kind of becomes, has some sort of dimension, it's not just flat.
And then we're going to do the same thing. So we're leaving this angle here. We're not touching anything in there. And we're going to come to the next section that we went down. And we're going to have a line coming in here. I'm going to use the brush the thick way because this is a bit of a thicker piece. So we want to show like it's a little bit thicker there. So the reason I do it this way, and maybe this is just me, but I try to break it down in the most simple way for everyone to understand why, why it's easier. So when I, when we first did the shape of the building, we did it in shapes and we did it in sections. So naturally my mind remembers the shapes we did, right? So we did this first, then we did a thin one, then we continued on, right? So now when I go back to that, when I'm ready to shadow or highlight, I'm going to work in each shape. So I know that where every piece is divided, which piece did I do? Where's that piece that's going to have some kind of um, dimension to it, right? So I'll know because I did this separate from this, that there's going to be a line there for me in my mind for highlighting. Um, hopefully that makes sense to you. But as opposed to just doing this outline like this and just coloring it all in, I've broken it down so that I know exactly what shapes are, are separated in my head. Okay. So now what we're going to do is right where this meets this, we're going to take, and we've been going this way so far with our shadow. I'm going to take and I'm going to pull down on this line here just to show that this building is tall and long whereas these were coming out sideways right so there's a natural line right here we don't want to make it even we kind of want to hit and miss because like we said shadows are not even so we start a little line and then we just make sure we don't have a ton of paint on our brush I wipe the excess off and I just pull down so I come in and I just take it and pull down lightly And then I continue that all the way down this side here, just lightly. We want to be able to see still black through. And that's what we have. So now you can see it pops right out. Okay, so I'm going to recap this just so that everybody's on the same page here. So we took our first shape and we just brought some paint out here. So a very light amount of paint and we just kind of put it with our brush this way just to kind of sweep it out. And then we went all the way just to show that there is that shape there. So that was our first step. Then we know we have our ledge here. So I just did a very thin line right here. And we skipped the underneath because this ledge is coming out. So that's going to be in the shadow. And this is where it's going to pop back out. So under this one here, I just put some more just to kind of bring that out. And we left another space. So everywhere where the angle is going down an angle, that space is left alone. It's just a line at the top of it. Basically the width of our down line. And then this here, same with this one, I followed suit, same thing. And then we leave all this. And then we continued down the long tower. So I did a little bit of an uneven line and then I just pull my brush down. You're going to want a little bit of paint. If you have too much paint, it's just going to look like big lines. And then we just covered all the way down this one side here.
So we're going to go on and we're going to, now we're going to do the same thing to this light. Just kind of let the angles pop out a bit. So we're going to stick with the same color. And we have our two little small one half circle and then a kind of an oval that we made here. We're just going to bring a little bit of a highlight in the center of them. So we don't want it to be on the outline um, at all. We just want to do a, just a tiny little brush stroke down here. Just to kind of show that it's two separate pieces there. After we're done highlighting this light, I will give everyone time to catch up. So we're just putting a little bit in the center. I'm still using my, my small flat brush. And then we're gonna take, and we're gonna do the same thing. This is a different section than this. So we're gonna remember our lines that we did. I'm going to kind of follow suit to this light here and we're just going to pull down a little bit of gray as we go. So just a little bit there and a little bit there. So you want to be able to see those lines still. So I just took here, I just pulled down a little bit into that shape and a little bit here. I'm leaving the base that we, the main base that we started with. And then the same thing is going to happen up here. So I'm going to take and just put a tiny bit down here. And then for this one here, I kind of just went across this way just so we could differentiate the shape there. And then we're doing the same thing to these, um, this little trap, whatever that shape is called, who knows, um, this little somewhat triangle and then this oval here. So we're just going to put a little bit there, just kind of a line to show where it separates from this. And then same with here, just a little fill in here, nothing crazy. So we kind of end up with that there. So I'll give everyone a few minutes just to catch up with all their shadowing. Um, and then we'll move on to the red balloon. So we just have the red balloon left and we're just going to put in some vines and then we'll be done. So probably another, I'll say 20, 25 minutes. I guess I'm running past the 10 o'clock mark. I usually do. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather make sure everybody's caught up than be done, I guess, a half an hour early. That's okay, Lisa. You can come back and watch the replay. It's going to be up soon. It'll be up for a while. And then, like I said before, um, you can catch me on YouTube, too, at same name, Artisticris, if my videos are all up there. So while everyone's shadowing, I just want to quickly talk about one event I have coming up. Um, I'll show you here my example. I can find it. So this one's coming up in a couple weeks. This is a fundraiser I have going on. Um, this is for a lady who, this is her um, second time being diagnosed with cancer. So. I'm holding a fundraiser for her. I met her at, when I did a fundraiser for the Kinney Foundation, I met her in person before COVID. Um, and she's just, just a wonderful lady. Um, and they had reached out to me and said, would I be willing to do a fundraiser paint night? So I said, absolutely. Her favorite saying is just breathe. I think in a time of stress, that's what we all, that's really all we can do. So, um, 
This is going to be happening um, in my events. You'll see it up. It's in the next couple weeks. It's $15 to join. As of right now, I have about 25 people signed up. I'm going to give $5 from every ticket, but if I can reach 40 people, I'm going to split it completely in half just to give the family a little extra support. Um, I can't imagine if it was my family going through it, so um, it would be very stressful and it'd be nice just to have at least money issues not being a problem when you're sick, right? So that's going to be happening. I'm going to throw in the link. I'm going to pin the link just... Um, Pin, sorry, pin in the comments the link to the event if you want to check it out or read more about it. Her story's in there as well. Um, and I'll be posting it on my page for the next couple weeks. But I'm just going to go ahead and do that in case anybody wants to check it out. Like I said, if we can get to 40 people, I'm going to split it half instead of just $5. So we're almost, we're over halfway there already. Okay, so it should be stuck to the top of the comments if you want to check it out there. All right, so just let me see some thumbs up if you're ready to go on to painting that creepy red balloon. Okay, so I see lots of thumbs up coming up, so we'll get started. So we're going to go and put whatever color red you have is fine. I have Tuscan red here. It's a bit of a deeper red. Um, I'm going to put that on our plate. Like I said, you can have your balloon facing whatever way you want. Um, I just did mine, like I said, on the side because it kind of just looks like it's it's trapped and it's just been hanging there for a while. So we're going to come in um, just a little bit be below it and we're just going to do basically the shape of a balloon. So just almost like a circle, but a little bit um, less round at the bottom. So I'm going to take my hat, my little flat brush here and put some paint on it. And we're just going to do the outline for now. So I'm just going to take a rough outline here. And like I said, if you want to start smaller first and work with the shape after, you can do that. Make it come out a little bit. Start with a circle, make it come out a little bit more at the top like this. To make it look more like a balloon. And then we're just going to color that in red. So we're just going to get a first light coat in there. I always say this every paint party, but I don't know who's heard it and who hasn't. It's better with acrylic paint to do thin layers and more of them, then try to cake one or two layers on because you're going to get lumps and bumps and cracks and you're not going to get the proper shadowing in. So it's best to take your time, do a nice thin layer, and then just go over it one or two more times. So we're going to start with that, like that there. And we're just going to put a little, let me put this down a bit, this little tip in here. So it's just going to come out a little bit, just like that. That's basically where our string is going to be hanging on.
So I'm just gonna do a quick, just a light coat here, just a second coat. If yours is still really wet, don't do this yet. Mine dried pretty quick because I did a pretty thin layer. We're just gonna get a little bit more darkness in there. If you wanna take two seconds to blow dry it and put on your second layer, you can do that. I'm just using my small flat, flat brush. So while we have the red out, we're letting our balloon dry a bit. I just added a tiny bit of red just reflecting in this light here. So if you just want to do basically the same thing we did with the gray in here, but very, very subtle, like very small amount, I just put a little bit of red just kind of popping up here, which I'll show you closer. So just a tiny bit of red down in the base of that, just like it's kind of reflecting off the balloon. And then I just took also and put a tiny bit around the light, kind of like the light's reflecting it too. So just a little bit in here. This is not necessary if you don't want to do it. But I just kind of go with my pointed brush and I just do a little bit around, same with down here. Just like it's kind of reflecting off that balloon. And so what I'm going to make here is I want to kind of make the balloon a little bit deeper and I want it to have a little bit of contrast. So I'm going to take um, a little bit of the red and I'm just going to move it to the side. And I'm going to take a tiny bit of black and just mix it in. This is going to make almost like um, almost like a crimson red or a, a burgundy I don't know if we can see that there. So you'll see, I just have, it's a little bit deeper. It's not a ton of black I added in. So we have our original red and then just a little bit of a darker shade. And I'm just gonna come in with that darker red around the edges here. I'm just gonna paint that on. There's gonna be a line here, but we're gonna blend it in a second. So we're just taking that darker red and just going around the edge. We're not worrying about getting incredibly close to the edge. It doesn't have to cover it. You can, it can show some of that original red on the outside, just like that. And then we're gonna sneak back into that original red we used and we're just gonna kind of blend it out through the center here. Just so it's a little bit darker. And you'll see here, it's kind of a little bit darker on the edges. And as you go towards the center, it gets a little bit lighter. So I basically just took the dark red and just painted like a whole little section around. And then I went right into the original red without washing my brush. And I just blended that in. I just did a little bit in the center, kind of like I did the light, like a little circle and then worked my way out.
Okay, so we want, what we want to do next is we're going to work on the little string that's attaching this balloon to um, the wrought iron. So we're going to have, um, get some white and we're going to use our fine tip brush here. So I just have a little bit of white on there. You don't want to have too much and we're going to draw this little circle in here. So you'll see on the original, there's like a little tiny circle that kind of shows that, you know, the balloon has a point there, like an end that opens up. So I just come in here and I just, right on the end, I just draw a tiny circle. So sort of like that there. And then I'm gonna keep using my white and I'm just gonna bring the string around. So I'll move this closer to show you after, but we're just gonna bring the string around and we're just gonna bring it up here all the way up to here. Now you can put some twists and twirls in it and kind of make it look like it's been wrapped around for a while. The wind has definitely gotten to it. I'm going to bring it right up to here. And we'll show here that it's kind of just wrapped around. So all I did here was take this, my, my fine point here, and I just draw a line and I made a couple twirls and brought it all the way up to this post. And then I just painted lines on the post. So it looks like it's wrapped around and then my string is coming back down. I'll just wait a couple seconds for everyone to get that on there. So for the remainder of the painting, I'm going to be sticking with this pointed brush. So we're not going to be moving again from this brush. So if you have any other ones that are hanging around, you can wash them off. And we're just going to be going back into our black paint after. So I'm going to just be putting a little bit of extra extra highlights and low lights into the balloon. So I just have my um, pointed brush here with some black on it. And I'm just putting, just kind of outlining here and there. We don't want to make exact lines, but just kind of showing the roundness of the balloon. And we're going to just put some black around where the white is. So we're going to kind of be following that same line, but with the black. So the white is going to be showing kind of behind it, illuminating it. So this black line does not have to be exactly over that white one. Um, it's just kind of showing where it is. So you'll see there 
it kind of just <clears throat> makes the string pop out a bit more. Yeah, for sure. So I'll show you how it's wrapped around there again. Let me get a good grip on this here. So basically it's just a line up to that post and it goes over top of it. And then I just put little lines on the post going down so that it looks like it wrapped around. So it's coming up and right over top and then more lines and then it's coming back down here. And then all we have left to do is these vines. So we're still sticking with the skinny brush, this pointed brush here. And the way you place your vines is not, there's no specific right or wrong. These are kind of just placed here and there, but um, I'll show you how I have them kind of coming off the building. And then you don't have to place them exactly where mine is. That'd be almost impossible just because there's so many. But you can just kind of get a feel for your painting where there's empty space and you can kind of just fill it in. So what I do is I wrap the vines. The vines come right from the base of the page because it's going to look like they're wrapping around this building. So when you bring that vine over this highlighted area here, you're going to see that it looks like it's wrapping around the building. So I'm just kind of coming up here. And then... You can kind of just make them fall kind of however wispy way you want. They can be crossing on the building here, just kind of falling off. <laughs> Pam says, poor Pennywise lost his balloon. <laughs> oh, geez. That's funny. I love doing paint nights. These guys make me laugh. <laughs> Everybody needs a good laugh. And they're just continuing to come. They're, they're squiggly. They're, they're vines, right? So there's really no right or wrong way that they're forming. Um, my only thing is that I say is when we get close to the end, we just release pressure off the canvas. So I'm a little bit heavier handed here. And then as I go here, I kind of lift off and that gives them the skinny tips, right? So they can be coming all off of here. Like I said, it doesn't really matter where they fall because I'm not going to be able to get every vine in here that I have in here perfect. It's not, not possible unless I take every little second and check it out right so we're just having fun with it it's it's loose and i'm just coming up all the way up the building I'm just kind of crisscrossing those vines over And this is the part where I said, don't get too particular about the way we did our grates in here because with the vines mixed in, that pattern kind of gets interrupted a bit. Mm. 
We have them falling over here. They're kind of coming up the building. Yeah, so you're not going to see the vines as much here when the paint dries. It's just the illusion. So once those vines cross over that highlighted area, we know like in our brains that that is continuing into the darkness. Just we don't necessarily see it, all of it. And then we can bring some same up here, just kind of coming around the light. And what's cool here is we have some coming right over the light. So don't be afraid to just bring one through your light here. Kind of cross it over. You can even, those lines that you originally did, you can even take and come off of them. So if I have a line coming here, I can come off of that line and go down a bit. And I just bring in some around the balloon. I don't interrupt the balloon. I don't put any over top of it. You could if you wanted to. I just want the balloon to be kind of like a focal point. So that's why I didn't. But And just kind of work with it. If you feel like you have enough, then you don't have to do any more. I feel like mine's kind of getting there. missing some comments here. Let me check these out. Thank you, Tammy. I appreciate that. I try to make it easy for everyone to follow along. Kind of use analogies for why I do what I do to try to make it easier to understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. So don't forget when you are done with your vines to sign your work. I always say be proud of your work. All of our work is a work in progress. So it doesn't matter if this is the first time you picked up a brush or if you've picked up a brush many times. We all have things to learn. We can all improve, um, but it's a part of the journey. So being proud of what you've accomplished at this moment in time is, is uh, important. And feel free to share your artwork with me. I always 
trying to make a cool video of everybody's artwork um, and showcase everybody's and just kind of get everyone involved. So feel free to do that. And uh, you can either post it right in the comments of this video here once I once I put up the replay or you can um, private message me and send it to me that way. That's a couple ways. Also, if you want to, I have a, another uh, Facebook group called Created to Create uh, with Artisticress. And that's just where we showcase all our art as well. So you can feel free to join that. I'll put in the comments and I'll pin the name of that group in case you want to join it. Um, and yeah, it's a judgment-free zone. So whether you're new or you're very experienced at painting, throw them in there. Sometimes it's nice to have different levels of artists and we can ask each other questions and just help each other out. So um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the paint night. Um, and I had a blast with these guys like I always do. And yeah, I will be live again next week for another free paint night. It's a yoga paint night, which I think you kind of saw when I was showing the page. But feel free to check out the events under my page and you can see all of them coming up. I have a whole bunch coming up. So lots more to be added. A um, couple parent and me's as well with our kids. So have a great night, everybody. And I will um, see you soon. Happy Halloween.